Hello everyone, myself Gurpreet Singh Chhabra and I welcome you all to my channel Revenious Learner. Well, the topic of discussion of the video has already cleared from the name of the video that is the four piece of marketing. The reason why I choose this topic as a topic of discussion on my first YouTube video is just because of this picture. Well, I laughed a lot after seeing this picture but then I decided to tell you all the true picture which is not this. Hence. I decided to discuss the 4 P's of marketing in detail. Now starting with the very basics of the 4 P's of marketing. The idea of the 4 P's of marketing was first given by Sir Jerome McCarthy in 1960s. It is often said that if a target market is not clear to one, he will always jumble up in all his business activities and hence his business will not be a success. This concept of 4 P's of marketing is a very basic concept. But if ignored, it can lead to disasters and if learned, it can lead to heavy profits for the company. Now, let us move to the main, the main concept. concept of the 4 P's of marketing lies in the idea of marketing mix. The 4 P's of marketing form the basis of the marketing mix model. What does marketing mix means? Marketing mix simply means putting the right product in a place at the right time with the correct price. So what does this exactly mean? Well, it simply means that the four P's of marketing are product, price, place and promotion. Now moving on to product. Product can be any item that is built or produced to satisfy the need of a person or a group of persons. Now, for any product, there is a certain life cycle involved for which a marketer should do an exclusive research before its launch. Now, the product life cycle mainly consists of four important stages which are the market introduction phase, the growth phase, the maturity phase and the sales decline phase. Now, what does this four phases exactly mean? The four phases mean as follows. In the market introduction phase, your product is a newly launched product into the market. As it is a newly launched product into the market, the, the people might not be aware of the product. Hence, it is very important to make the people aware of the product by doing an informative exercise of campaigning. Now, as you move on from the market introduction phase to the growth phase, your sales and your profit slowly start to pick up. One or two competitors might enter into the market, but then you can do a persuasive campaign of advertising. As you move on from the growth phase to the maturity phase, more and more competition will start to pick up. In this case, you should do an intensive advertising campaign so that your sales are still continuing to be growing and your profits are also growing. As you move on from the maturity phase to the last phase that is the sales decline phase, there is a stiff competition in the market and now the product start to lose its appeal. Now it is very important to decide whether to further continue with the product or not. In this case, if you decide not to continue with the product, then the production might be ultimately stopped. So for any product, it is extremely important to reinvent the product continuously during the product life cycle phase. Now at the ultimate stage is the sales decline phase. It, is, it becomes more and more important to reinvent or to modify the product as per the needs of the market in the sales decline phase because that is the ultimate phase where you can lose the hold from the product. And now a second important point from the company perspective is that the company also should try to launch new and new products into the market. There are certain set of questions that one should always answer to have a successful product launch into the market. The set of questions are as follows. How will the customer use your product? What are the features the customers want from your product? What are the features that your product has to fit the customer requirements? Are there any features that you are designing? that are not required by the customer. Now, what are the sizes or colors available for your product? Also, the second, uh, the one more important question can be like how your product looks like and how your product is different from, your, from the product of your competitors. Now, moving on to the second and the very important P of marketing that is the price. The price of any product is the value that a customer pays for it. In a marketing strategy, the, mar the price is a very important factor because the sales and the demand of the product depends on the price of the product. Now there are three important pricing strategies that one should be aware of. That is the market penetration pricing strategy, the market skimming pricing strategy and the neutral pricing strategy. 
Now, what does market penetration strategy mean? Market penetration strategy means that in the launch of the product, you have the product launched with a very low price. Now, with a very low price launch of the product, this will help the customers to get attracted to your product because the customers are always interested in the price and the quality of the product. Now, if your price is very good and good as, a, as compared to your competitors, all the customers will migrate to your product. The most common example of the market penetration strategy is the recent price war that is going on between different mobile companies. The mobile companies are, have now started to offer a discounted price for their mobiles and hence this is leading to customers getting attracted to different mobile companies on a daily basis. Now let us move on to the market skimming strategy. The market price skimming strategy. This strategy can be used by companies which are launching the products that are new to the markets. By new, I mean to say that for a certain applications, the such kinds of products are never have been made before. And if any company that launches such a product into that segment, the company is bound to attract more and more customers. Now, if at this stage the company decides to keep the price very high, then it might be the case that because the product is nowhere available into the market, all the customers will buy this product and hence this will lead to the company boosting its sales and profit. Now, the major drawback for this strategy is that because of the high price of a company on a, of a company charging on its product, many new competitors might enter into the market offering a very competitive price. With this competitive price, there is a risk that the company might lose might start losing its customers soon thereafter. Now, let us move on to the neutral pricing strategy. This strategy can be adopted by companies which are launching a product that is already existing into the market by different competitors. Now, the reason this strategy can help to have a new, uh, company to have its product established into the market is because the company will launch its product with a market price same as the competitor price. Now, how it will help the company? Because of this, the product of the company becomes more and more aware into the market. It will not lead to the company getting major profits because uh, the company is keeping the price of the product same as the market price of the product. Keeping this into account, the market share of the company might not increase. But this will help the company to establish itself in the initial years when it is actually new into a market where uh, the product is already existing by different comp competitors. So, in short, I would say that the neutral pricing strategy is the safest, safest strategy for the companies to adopt if they are launching a product into a market that is not new to its competitors. Now starting with the third P of marketing that is the place. Now place is very important factor because one should sell the products in a place that is easily accessible by the potential buyers. Some of the distribution strategies mm -hmm. that can be adopted when it comes to deciding the place of the product to be sold in. Now, the strategies are as follows. One is the intensive distribution, second is the extensive distribution, third is the selective distribution and the fourth is the franchising. Now, what is meant by intensive distribution? An intensive distribution is a marketing strategy in which a company sells its product through as many outlets as possible. For example, it's a toothpaste. You can find a toothpaste in almost each and every place wherever you go. Whether it's a supermarket, whether it's a drugstore, whether it's a general mall. So that is uh, that is a case of an intensive distribution marketing strategy. In case of extensive distribution marketing strategy, the company sells its products only through certain retailers at a certain geographical areas only. In so, in short, I can say that in extensive distribution, there is an agreement between the supplier and the retailer of the product that the company grants him exclusive rights for a certain geographical area to deal with that product. Now, let us move on to the third distribution strategy that is the selective distribution. In the selective distribution strategy. In case of selective distribution strategy, the company sells its product through select outlets in a certain location in a certain specific locations. And now moving on to the franchising. Franchising. Franchising is a market distribution strategy in which any franchiser, that is a company, licenses its, its know-how, its brand, its procedures, sometimes its intellectual property to the franchisee. In, in return, the franchisee pays a certain fees and agrees to comply with certain obligations set out under the franchise agreement. Moving on to the last P of marketing, that is the promotion. 
Now, promotion is basically from publicizing about the product. Publicizing can be done with the help of physical environment like the trade, concerts. In case of traditional environment, we can use certain print media, newspapers, and we can also use media like radios, uh, hoardings. In case of digital environment, we can use social media sites, email marketing for promotions of a product. I would say that promotion comes into place when the product is already launched into the market. Well, I am not in agreement with this. There are two very important questions that, if taken care before the product launch phase, can help in easy promotions of the product. The first question is that, what is your name of the product? And the second, does your product has a catchy name? So today we learned about the four P's of marketing, that is the product, price, place, and promotion. In short, the combination of your promotion strategies and the how you go about your promotions will depend on your budget the message you want to communicate and the target market which you already have defined in the previous steps. Thank you for giving your valuable time in watching this video. I am always of the opinion that learning is a continuous process and we should learn as if there is no tomorrow. So if you have learned something in life today, new, so you should please click on like. If you have some suggestions regarding the future videos or this video, please comment below. And for getting the notifications of my future videos, please subscribe to my channel Revenues Learner. Thank you.